いきなり現れたよかったんだよ<笑>この部屋にいるのはヤバいこいつを倒すことが大切なんだみんな死んじまったらおしまいだからなアバよイギー He protect. He attack. But most importantly, he after. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the probably the best last epoch starter build in the game. Of course, we're talking about the Void Knight Auto Bomber. Now, the main goal of this build is just to spam balls and well, basically obliterate everything on on your way. There are multiple variations of this build. This one basically um, focuses on stacking spell critical strike chance. Right now, we have 49%. When we buff ourselves, we actually have 62%. That's more than enough, to be honest. Now, first, let let's go through the skills. Shield rush. This is this is our uh, main movement skill. Uh, basically, you can basically put anything you want in here. Mm, the most important thing is this, though, the dark rush. That says we no longer require a shield to dark rush. It basically allows us to, you know, shield dash or shield rush without the um, the equipped shield it just makes us move faster basically there are variations like i said so we are using actually a one-handed weapon and a skull i mean catalyst instead of a shield uh, you can use a two-handed weapon as well uh, but that depends on the um, actual um, gameplay you like another skill is the smite skill and this actually is our uh, main single target dps skill because well, the balls might be not too uh, too much or maybe not enough for, for an actual boss, so we just spec into the smite skill and uh, later on we actually transfer uh, or convert the skill to void damage. Here we want double cast chance of course, damage, less cost because we are actually casting it using our life pool, which isn't a problem actually with the amount of regen we have, you already saw that. Critical multiplier, that's basically extra 100% more damage. And base critical strike chance, just for the juicy casts, uh, sorry, for the juicy crit chance. Our main source of DPS, basically, the um, Devouring Orb. Uh, here we want few things, and again, there are variations. Some people uh, like to take the Abyssal Emission, I just don't feel like it's necessary because we have enough uh, clear speed on this build. The most important thing is the Void Adept. Uh, as you can see, it is doubled when you have 90 Vitality, 90 plus Vitality, so you actually need 90 Vitality in this build. Then we of course have the Rift Core for Void Penetration, Ward Rot for Duration and Time Rot Chance. It just makes our balls uh, rotate around us for the longer, longest time. Devouring Orb orbits you, this is the base of this skill, you actually need this, obviously. This is just, you know, to uh, go through to here, and that's Void Damage on Impact. And a, an ad, uh, additional Collision Damage on Impact with the Void uh, Bolts. Sigils, they are uh, in the Paladin Tree, if I'm correct. Yeah, the Paladin Tree, you need the Sigils. They give you a ton of damage and survivability. Endurance threshold, we are actually stacking uh, endurance here, so it's it's really good for us. Longer sigils, obviously, and plus one maximum sigil because we have perks uh, that stack with our sigils. Damage per granted sigil plus 20%. Fire damage, uh, it doesn't matter actually we are, because we are again um, converting this to the void damage right here. 
chance to summon Sigil on kill, just uh, so we don't have to cast ourselves the Sigils, it's just a nice quality of life. Cast speed uh, doesn't actually um, matter at all, because we are taking the um, uh, Sigil Call that uh, are cast instantly. Um, so basically when we are uh, casting Smite, I cannot do it in town, but when we are casting Smite and hitting a boss, basically you can just cast the sigils with a one second cooldown and you just don't have to stop casting your smite at the same time. And Anomaly, this is actually our um, buffing um, skill. Void touched. Time Rock Chance on return. Doesn't matter too much. Time Bubble, uh, this is essential here because it just makes the skill work on us. We are in a time bubble right now, so we are getting all the buffs that the, bu uh, the bubble is actually giving us. And we are having increased critical strike chance, obviously. Uh, the duration of the bubble is increased. Um, the buffs uh, after we leave the bubble are actually uh, lingering on our character for another 2 seconds on exit. Um, this is uh, the important note that the bubble is actually on us, because if you don't have it and you cast the bubble, it just lands somewhere when you have the mouse cursor. And then we have attack and cast speed, doesn't matter too much. I'm gonna talk about the cast speed on this build uh, a little bit later. Health leech, this uh, basically gives us a leech on our um, void damage. It's not too important to be honest, because we have tons of leech from the passive tree. And uh, Time Bubble increased uh, health leech, um, that's basically a leech rate, meaning uh, we are actually healing faster when we are getting hit. Uh, that's why when you're basically getting on low life and hitting something, the spell leech is working really really good and just uh, topping uh, the health up to the, to the maximum basically on each single hit. Now let's talk uh, about the passive tree. Here basically you just take Vitality, of course, and Survivability and Resistances, and that doesn't matter really. Just this note is really nice, it's like minus 10% damage, so it's really good. And of course, uh, again, Health and Mana. This will uh, help us basically with the Smite, because um, basically while casting Smite, it costs literally like nothing, like zero mana, as you can see here. But of course we are casting it uh, with Vitality, I mean, not Vitality, but like Health. So uh, we are actually losing some health, but we are actually not because we have this. Uh, force Guard, this is actually basically uh, the last three points that was uh, on my build. I didn't really have anywhere to put them in. You can basically put them in Void Knight, but uh, I just put them here for the nice uh, increased armor when we are getting hit. Paladin, we just need 15 points to grab the Sigils of Hope, and this is our, you know, like one of the main sources again from that for damage and survival team. And the main tree is the Void Knight of course. I'm just gonna briefly go over it. As you can see this is what uh, converts our smite to void damage basically. More health, of course resistances, damage. Uh, like I said you can put those additional 3 points in this tree so you get additional 3% um, critical strike multiplier on this build because as you can see we got uh, 1% for each passive that is allocated in this tree, so right now we have like 75% more uh, critical multiplier with this uh, node alone. Again, void damage, void damage, leech, and that's what I was talking about, actually 6% is massive, with the additional 3% from the skill it's just overkill. Vitality, um, and again this is for smite, um, basically smite is scaling now with vitality, same as, same goes with the um, Devouring Orb, that's why the build is basically a Vitality Stacker. Echo Chance, this is basically um, the unique trait for the um, Void Knight, basically every time we are casting Smite or um, Devouring Orb, we, are, we just have a 10% chance to cast another one. Again here we have uh, Echo Chance, basically the Time Rot um, Chance is good, but we are not uh, focusing on this uh, too much, and the melee attack speed doesn't matter um, at all, basically. Here we have another 10% for the total of 30% uh, Echo Chance on every cast skill. Here we have basically Void Damage and Movement Speed, this is just nice for, you know, no, obviously damage, but uh, for the, mov the Movement Speed is really good for Clear, clear Speed as well. 
Void Aegis um, basically gives us more survivability. And of course, again, Vitality, and that's basically it for the passive tree. These are basically the stats we are um, aiming for, basically. Of course, we want even more critical strike multiplayer if we can. 319 is not really much. Uh, again, 49 with uh, without the um, anomaly skill. 62 with it. Um, and again, we are gonna talk about the weapons now, because right now I have uh, a one-handed wand. Um, this is basically for the cast speed. Uh, the cast speed is completely irrelevant in this build. It actually doesn't give us anything, um, even though it lies uh, a little bit because cast speed normally is increasing uh, the DPS here uh, on paper, but it's actually not increasing the damage of the skill at all. Um, the main point of having a little bit of cast speed in this build uh, is basically to make it less clunky. Because normally, if I turn on my skills and I start running away, the character needs a second or like a half a second, you see, to stop and cast the skill. Which, uh, in some points, if you have um, not too much uh, casting speed, can be really annoying. Uh, but with just a little bit of cast speed in this build, uh, it's, it's much more, um, well, less clunky, to be honest. Just nicer. So if you want, you can, like me, uh, grab a wand with an increased cast speed or something like that. But uh, the, probably the most, the best uh, thing to take here would be a 200 staff uh, instead with like spell damage and void damage or something like that. And the other point of having two, two, uh, I mean, 100 we weapon here is that we can grab a skull that has a flat 6% uh, critical strike chance. This basically. Um, this is basically what gives us uh, that, that nice um, critical strike chance, basically. Because if we take it off, as you can see, let's just wait for the anomaly to be gone. Uh, 49%, and if we take it off, it's actually only 18. So uh, having a school here is just really helpful for the critical strike chance. Of course, you can always stack critical strike chance on the rest of the gear. So it's actually possible to get like 50% without the skull, but I just found it that uh, I want to be less um, clunky and more, uh, let's say, um, more quality of life instead of just having pure damage on my 200 weapon. Let's go through the um, through the items right now. Again, uh, we basically want critical strike multiplier. Um, oh, by the way, sorry, let's start with the chest because this chest is actually insane. Uh, it is really difficult to make one like that. Um, but if you manage to get something remotely close to this, you're good to go, basically. Again, uh, what we are stacking are resistances, void damage, vitality, of course, spell void damage, critical avoidance, we need 100% just to not to get, get killed, basically. Um, the, um, the sealed smelter's wrath here is uh, not important at all, I just sealed it just so I can craft anything else on this helmet. Mm. The amulet, again, spell, spell crit, resistances, nothing too fancy. Again, this is something that I just had in my um, stash. It's not too important what you have here. The important stuff is the uh, flat critical strike chance, of course. And the increased one, the resistances are, are nice, of course. Rings, um, these are actually uh, really good, to be honest. Um, you are focusing to get the... Um, the coral rings because they have the implicit of five or six vitality if i'm correct yeah five or six and uh, so you have bonus vitality on top of the um, additional of course void damage critical strike chance armor endurance as you can see the increased healing healing effectiveness is not important here it's really nice actually that i uh, was managed uh, that i managed to seal it uh, but it's not really that important for the belt again nothing too important here uh, void damage and the cleanse all ailments on potion use, that's really helpful on basically all the builds. The gloves, um, you can have two kinds of gloves here basically. The first ones, as you can see, with the implicit of critical strike chance increase. The other ones, I can't remember the name, but they have the um, uh, casting speed. Again, this is uh, really useful if you want to be less, less clunky. And the most important thing probably here is the chance to shred armor on here. You just need it on, the, on your build. Boots again, movement speed, vitality, these are actually really bad as I can see, um, but it doesn't really matter. And when it comes to um, the relic, of course, we are having the one with the implicit of void damage. 
Uh, chance to apply future uh, strike on melee hit doesn't apply to us basically because we are not a melee build. We are just, um, you know, caster. And that's basically it. When it comes to the uh, idols, um, we just need a lot of vitality here basically. So we have vitality, vitality and void damage. This is a really nice idol. Vitality, vitality, vitality. Vitality and on the small ones, I just have you know basically void damage and healing effectiveness. Doesn't really matter armor, elemental resistances. The main point is that you actually need the 90 vitality just for the uh, devouring orb alone. So the main point of this build is that it actually doesn't require any unique or legendary items. You can just basically throw any random stuff from the ground on here. And it's gonna work because um, the point of stacking vitality, as you can see, it just grants us additional health again. So um, we are both stacking damage and defense just from the vitality skill alone. You know, if our smite and our devouring orb is stacking basically uh, vitality uh, and stacking more damage with it, and we are actually getting more health from it, uh, then we are basically good to go. Again, on top of that, we are stacking endurance. As you can see, I have it topped out at 60%, which is my maximum. Uh, and the endurance threshold should be actually a little bit higher, but I don't, mind, I don't mind it at all. And basically, with this build, last, as you can see, we can basically clear over 200 corruption, which for a starting build uh, that requires absolutely no gear, uh, I think it's uh, a good point of start. And again, as you can see, we have mods here like increase health, increase health, increase health. So uh, the damage is pretty good as well. All right, we just can focus on the blessings now. Uh, it's not too important uh, what you have here, but there are some nice quality of life blessings in the in the game or in the build. Uh, I'm just gonna um, briefly talk about them. Of course, the um, the drop chance for whatever doesn't matter at all. This is the most important uh, thing we can find in this build. That is straight thread void, void resistance on hit. You can grab it probably if I'm remembering correctly from the. Um, uh, big, yeah, they are the Black Sun, the big uh, Void Bird boss. Uh, it took me actually a while because I, I had to kill him like 20 times. But this is something that you actually absolutely need on the build. The Shred, shred Void is really important here. Then we have um, Mana, it's really nice uh, because sometimes, rarely, but sometimes when we are casting the... Uh, Void Sieges you can run out of mana, but it's not too important, you can get this from Lagon. And then we have of course uh, Critical Strike Avoidance, this is probably from the, that's from the um, Reigns of Dragons if I'm correct. Basically, like I said, you basically want the uh, Critical Strike Avoidance, it actually should be 100% here, I was just lazy about it. Increased Armor, it's always nice in any build basically. And 27% endurance, that's like really good as well. Alright, I forgot to tell you about the um, outcasting basically in the game. Okay, check this out. So. As you can see, I am currently not clicking any buttons here. But if I turn on the auto casting, the character is now casting it automatically without me. Like basically, I am not pressing the R button, I am not pressing the W button, and the character just does it itself. I'm gonna show you how to set it set it up. Like one second. So what you want to do is basically go to your um, keys, to your where is it? input keys, yeah. And as you can see. In the num lock on your keyboard for the uh, w and the r key i have additional buttons here like keypad 7 and keypad 8 this is on the uh, numpad again so what you want to do like if i press 7 it casts the ball if i press 8 it casts the w key so what you want to do is just turn on the num lock hold both of these like i'm holding them right now both the 7 and 8 and just turn off the num lock and you are good to go basically, the character is casting it by uh, by himself right now. 
I'm not clicking anything, I'm just moving with my mouse right now. And that's how you basically uh, make it automatic. As you can see, the HP is basically going crazy right now. But with enough endurance and endurance threshold, you are actually really hard to, to kill, basically. 